Tableau and other visualization tools are doing is they're going in and they're grabbing the data and they're saying, hey, look at what you have. Does that even look right? Let's start asking the questions. Let's start finding the patterns. And when you do that, that's when it gets exciting. And then you say, what are we doing next? Where'd I go? Those verbs that Christian put up there, really about relate and chase um, and, and really trying to feel and get what's going on, that's what people want to do. They want to bring life to that information. Right, and not wait for the data warehouse that's being built, that was built, that was there five years ago, that's there 10 years ago. Wait, it's still the same data warehouse from 20 years ago. Well, I think in every people... market you're seeing like number one and number two emerge and then everybody else. And, and it's two horse races in every single market. Uh, and so regardless of where you're going, these IPOs, the first, um, there's, there's the West Coast philosophy on VC, which is just spend a ton of money, get a lot of customers on board, get the product out, win the go to market battle. And then you have the East Coast VC, which is let's get profitable, um, and, and what's really happening is the folks that are on the West Coast side getting the VC funding moving in that direction are winning because they're winning market share. It doesn't mean they're always going to win, but when you're competing against that, you're seeing these big gaps between one and two and, and the next set of players. I realized that we needed um, someone who could build out a new user business, who could build out um, our growth strategy, and we brought on Bridget Chambers. And you might know her from the SAP, America's SAP user group. Um, she grew that organization from 60,000 to 120,000 members. Fantastic. She growed significantly on a revenue basis, probably five, six X of the revenue they were bringing in before. And what we want is someone that understands end users. I mean, that's something really important to our business model. And we're looking for end users that are innovative, customers that are just really trying to push the needle. We attract market leaders and fast followers, and these are folks that are not afraid to make transformational changes. So. Now, yes. I've always been impressed. You're, you're, if not the hardest, work, you are the hardest working analyst I know, I have to say. <laughs> And I'm a pretty hard working analyst. You are a hard working I've been called analyst. the hardest working analyst in the business. I said, you don't know Ray Wang. <laughs> but, um, but so you're, you're, you're leaving here, you're going to Atlanta, and then you're going to Workday Rising, right? So tell us a little bit about what's next for, for you. In the well, next what's weeks. next is we are launching Constellation Index, and we're giving a sneak peek on our mobile ROI, which is 341 data points on where people are turning mobile into competitive advantage. And that's at the AirWatch conference, and we're up at noon, I believe, on Tuesday. And then after that, we're going to Rising, right? This is you know, work day, I mean, post IPO, their big conference. We're talking a lot of early adopters of the cloud that are looking at, you know, all the back office areas. So we're kind of excited, and I think they've got some special announcements that they're going to be announcing in verticals and partnerships. Yeah, that's a work days. What's your take on work day? I mean, they're just crushing it. Um, amazing story, 31 right? 31 deals in the last 12 months, and I'd say 28 of them went to work day that we were in. That's how crazy that market is. So a very active market, these are long-term contracts, um, Workday is winning it, um, I would say, in, in so many different areas. And, and we're just, it's, they're basically going after the old people soft base, they're renewing. These folks have had these HR systems for 20 years and they're trying to figure out how to get off. Uh, or, and they want something that their customers are excited to use. And this is where the usability comes back into play. Like same here, I mean, if you look at the Tableau users, it's user experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that stuff, I mean, it's how do you get, how do you democratize this information so that an end user can use it and they can get excited about using that material. About uh, yeah, how you see this playing out, uh, back to Tableau, uh, versus the incumbent BI players. You've been following that, uh, SAP Business Objects, uh, uh, Cognos, et cetera. Um, you know, it seems to me, obviously, Tableau is taking those guys on. They're, they're, Christian is talking directly about, not naming them, but he's talking about business objects, and he's talking about Cognos <laughs> in, in his keynote. But they are so well entrenched in so many organizations. How is, you know, there's huge opportunity here for Tableau, but how are they going to work their way into these new accounts when there are IT people that are clinging to their SAP uh, deployments and their SAP business object deployments? Meanwhile, they've got users who are, you know, just really want to use Tableau. How is that going to play out, do you think? Well, you're definitely right. And one of the things that you heard Christian and Chris talk about is land and expand, right? right? That's what they're trying to do. And, you know, when you go up and you show someone like that visualization and this is your data, everybody wants to get on it. 
right? The user experience wars is really what's, I mean, they're democratizing that information. And you just, you look at it and you're just like, hey, how do I get more of this? Um, we've been in so many accounts where we can say that, you know, procurement wakes up one day and says, oh my God, where'd all these Tableau users come from? We need <laughs> to talk to you, right? Or the IT director shows up and says, hey, what, what is this Tableau thing about? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. And it's not just that, it's these visualization tools. Um, you're also seeing like companies like SaaS really realize that, hey, visual analytics is going to be important. And if you saw the CI6 launch on SaaS and some of the other things that showed up, that's what they were going after. They, they realized that, hey, visualization is, it's so powerful that you have to go after this. But you're right, I mean, how do you get this to the executive level? I think it's going to require a different type of selling. Uh, I think that's what you're seeing as a foreshadow of part of what's happening on Tableau Enterprise. You know, I mean, honestly, if, if I was in charge of acquisition somewhere and if I could make these matches, I actually think like, a great match in heaven would be Adobe and Tableau. You take the content management, you just take the community functions, that expertise in really helping people share information, collaborate with that information, publish it, and tie it back to what Tableau has would be powerful. Um, but, okay, let's say that doesn't happen. I mean, they have a long runway. Right, I mean, there are so many folks that just want to be able to get hands onto this information. There's so many angles they can take. I'm, I'm just really surprised at how focused they've been so far in this conference. Okay. So, well, I was lucky enough to get here earlier, and, and what was fun was sitting in on the Ninja class. And uh -huh. I mean, you know, I, I did BI a little bit uh, in a past life, but what was interesting was the ability to just, this was all visual, drag, drop, really setting fun. It was very intuitive to learn. So it was a hands-on class? So you were it was a hands-on pre-conference class. I recommend people take it. Um, if they come next time, it's definitely worth it. How hard was it for you to sort of grasp the concepts and actually, do you feel like you could act, walk away now and use the tool? I think I need about two, three more days. Yeah, okay. Right, just watching what other people have built, but now I can copy the templates. Yeah. Right, you know, I'm just really going to copy and reverse hack, right? But if you build enough templates, put it into a community, that's where it gets powerful. And so those are things that I would hope they build out in, you know, on, on Tableau Online product. So. Yeah, so you could bogart the, the templates, watch some videos, and get up to speed and start being productive within a few days, you think? I think most people smarter than me should be able to do that. That's pretty <laughs> easy to do, so. Well, but it's not, it's not out of the box. I mean, you can see from the, from the, the, the demonstrations in the, uh, in the keynote, I mean, this, this is a complicated situation for yeah. a lot of people. There's still you know. training required. Yeah, no so, doubt. Uh, I'll, um, be, I'll be my usual snark, but here's what's going to happen. Amazon, who can't hire enough people, are going to bring people in. They're going to burn them out in two years. <laughs> that will pay for the reload, and then Tableau's on the back end picking them <laughs> yeah. up. And you got all these Microsoft employees that are saying, maybe it's time to leave, like <laughs> the folks that are there. Yeah. <laughs> Might so. be time to step out, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Well, that's right, they're, they're trying to hire. They can't hire fast enough. What about, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, what you're seeing in the Hadoop world. We were talking off camera a little bit about Hadoop, no sequel, no sequel. What was your line on that? The sequel to no sequel is back to sequel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the deal, right? We, a lot of folks went early, they got into Hadoop, they're all excited, they're doing all this stuff, they got the data mark, name value pairs are working great, things are moving like this, and then they're like, I got to build sequel functions. <laughs> so, yeah, we're coming full circle. So, so Hadoop's be becoming the data mart of the 2010s, is probably the way to look at it. Um, there's a lot of uses for it. I mean, in seriousness, I mean, we're seeing people come back. If you need some of the complicated SQL functions, you mean, you're going to end back on other tools uh, other than just going pure NoSQL. The Hadoop is really going to become a commoditized, kind of lower la layer in the big data architecture, if you will. It's going to serve a very important purpose, a very important commoditized uh, layer, but ultimately it's about how am I going to make use of this data? How am I going to surface insights to end users? How am I going to start to you know, put these things into production, automate processes based on intelligence? And that's where you're starting to move beyond Hadoop. Right, and then the stacks that are happening around cognitive computing, where data is becoming from decisions, that whole path from data to information to insight to decision, that's actually where the excitement is. That bottom layer, data and information, that's commoditized. That's going to be sitting in the cloud. It's all the algorithms that we surface on the insights, the questions that we're asking, we're forecasting, and what's happening when you're really getting to the decision process. That's what's going right. to get exciting on yeah. that end. Yeah, and, and you know, most organizations don't want to throw away data that has some, some potential value. Right, unless there's some, some you know, liability, you know, legal risk, okay fine, if you can defensively delete it, where do you stick it? People call it a data lake, Furrier hates that term, he says it's a data ocean, there's going to be data way too ocean. much data to fit in a lake. There's some big lakes out there, but <laughs> anyway, data ocean. Hadoop is the new tape, they say. So. Who's the dead sea? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll put it in the, yeah, uh, Who is not... the dead man walking? All right, so. if you want to touch that one? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'll hold, hold for that. All right, Ray Wang, you are awesome. Really, always a pleasure to have you on theCUBE and hey, see thanks, you. And good luck with the hey, conference. Hopefully we can, uh, we can be there with theCUBE. Hey, uh, we'd love to see a Constellation Connected Enterprise. Yeah, congratulations on uh, your new CEO and, uh, and the great growth that you guys are seeing. And 
change in the business. Uh, we love it, obviously. We're uh, birds of a feather, I hope, and I uh, really appreciate you coming on. Let's keep disrupting.